So I, um, what I have to do is just a brief introduction into ABA because the techniques that we use for pill swallowing are ABA techniques. And the reason that we started doing this talk is basically that a lot of my clients, families, started to come to me and say, oh my God, part of the reason my child is tantruming is because every day he or she has to go through you know, swallowing all these supplements or taking all these medications and all the food that they're eating has now turned into something disgusting that, so it's beginning to affect their diet and all this. So, um, and I asked some of the moms, this was a couple of years ago, to list for me the types of supplements that the kids are on and uh, they gave me a list I couldn't believe. Um, I had actually one child who was taking 75 supplements a day so, and all of it had to either be crushed or mixed in with food or something like that. So this is a really easy technique, pill swallowing. It's incredibly easy. And I also have to say that we've now put together a, an online package for training people because this has become such a huge th need. So uh, you, you can get information about it on our website, centerforautism.com, and we actually will uh, send you out the kits that you need for shaping the behavior as well as there's an online training to show you exactly how to do it and then you can access one of our supervisors who specializes in this and they can talk to you on the phone and tell you what to do and it's an easy process, you can do this. Um, basically the problems with pill swallowing are, you know, liquid, nothing, not everything comes in liquid and sometimes they taste bad and the biggest issue is that sometimes we're altering the chemical compound when we're crushing these uh, pills. So part of it is that, and then when you start hiding uh, crushed pills in food, and if you, the child can actually taste it, then they stop eating that food. And we don't want that either. So we're gonna work on teaching pill swallowing. And the youngest child I've done this with was um, two. So, and I actually taught a three-year-old to swallow a, a pill cam, which is probably the largest pill you'll ever see. Um, it's a massive thing with a camera inside it. So, um, and therefore I know that it's possible to do this and you just have to be patient. So the goal is I wanna teach my child to swallow pills of all sizes with ease, speed, and without distress so that he can get all the nutrients he needs. And uh, this is a considered a new skill. Uh, so like teaching anything else, it's gonna be a little bit difficult at first. And basically, um, talking about ABA very briefly, the concept is the behavior you wanna teach is how to swallow a pill. And the antecedent is all the stuff that happens right before it and all the stuff that happens right after is the consequence and those are the things we're manipulating. So. Just bear with me because I'll make this turn into non-technical language very briefly. Um, so if we just look at a concept of how we use ABA, mom says, take your pill, that's the antecedent. And then Andy doesn't know how to swallow, so he maybe gags, spits up, fights it, whatever. And then generally the result has been mom crushes the pill so Andy doesn't have to learn to swallow. So the current behavior is basically he learns hey, if I fuss enough, I'm not gonna do this. Um, or mom says, take your pills and slowly teaches the steps to swallowing pills. And then mom doesn't crush the pills, but really rewards Andy. And then Andy will le be less intimidated, will try it. The reason I put this slide in here first is because um, in the beginning when you start this, your child's not gonna be thrilled about it, so they're going to spit out. They're going to try to get away. They're gonna avoid it. And you, there, you need to keep trying um, and not give up right away because if you give up right away, you now have taught your child a worse behavior, which I don't want you to do. You've now taught your child, <clears throat> every time I say take your pill, if you tantrum, you're gonna get rid of me. And I don't want you to do that. So that's why when you start, you'll actually be starting with a tiny um, cake decoration thing, which the child will put on his tongue and it'll melt and he will be successful. So the whole process is a shaping process, which I'm gonna to talk to you about. So some of the things we do on the front end when you're giving your instruction are enriched environment, clear and concise instructions, shaping, chaining, and stimulus fading. I'm gonna talk about these things. So enriched environment is basically, um, it's a new skill, make it a happy place. 
you know, if you have all the pills that you have, put them in decorated things if your child's into that. Uh, play favorite music in the room, reduce the anxiety involved with learning a new skill that involves swallowing. And whenever you have a new skill that is connected to a response, like a gag response, you need to make sure anxiety is low. So you want to make sure the child is in a happy place and um, show the child your rewards. If you do this, this is what you're going to get. So motivate the child, basically. Make the environment positive. Give very brief instructions, like swallow the pill. Um, if you swallow one pill, you get to watch Wiggles. Always bring in the reinforcer if your child re um, understands that. If we do this, we're going to play. And essentially just show the visual so that your child is motivated and they know what's requested of them, what's required of them. If your child is a reader, write it out. If your child is on a PEX program, give them an icon for it. Communicate it very clearly. And the procedure that you're going to use is shaping and chaining. Shaping basically means that you are going to reinforce behaviors that are closer and closer to the actual behavior you want. So you bring the very first time you set up the location where you're going to teach this, you bring your child over and just reinforce them for sitting down there for a second, then that's it. The next time, maybe an hour later or two days later, whatever, you bring the child over and have them actually hold a pill, and that's it. You gradually will shape the behavior of the child to the point where they're comfortable sitting there and realize that that environment's going to be something friendly. Um, chaining is you will essentially break down the behaviors and reinforce them. I'm going to show you examples in a second which will help you understand this. The language of shaping and chaining that we use in regards to teaching someone to swallow a pill is stimulus fading because the pill is a stimulus. It's an object that we're trying to get the chi child to, to uh, ingest. When you guys, after I'm done, you can come up and look at some of these. These are containers that I have here and we'll have them at the demo table as well. And this is the kind of stuff we would send you if you go with our program, but you can order this stuff online or you can use your own containers, it doesn't matter. It's just a variety of objects, like for instance, cake sprinkles or you know, uh, mustard seeds or lentils or things that are of a different size. And what you, what you try to do is you start with the very smallest thing and hopefully something that will actually dissolve and melt. And usually we start with one of these two. So I'll, you, when you come up, you can kind of see them. And all the child has to do is put it on their tongue. And then success and happiness and all that sort of thing. The next time you go back, and you can, we do this in about seven hours. But you can do it, you can spread it out, you can bring it together however you want to do these sessions. It doesn't really matter. But what you'll do is you'll gradually increase the size. Okay, so the first time you're doing, you begin with the smallest size, tiny piece of candy or a speck of frosting or something like that. Allow success three times for the child at that level and then gradually increase to grains and then small pills and then larger pills. And what you'll see in these containers is that some of the little containers are just candy that melts, and you can get all of this stuff gluten casein free. And then once you go to the pill size, this is the stuff that's a little bit harder for you to order, but we order it because we do research and these are our placebo pills. And you can get them in size one, two, three, four. So there's, pr there's a gradual procedure. But also in the package on our website, you'll see where you can order them if you want to as well. But when you order them, you don't get this. You get a mass quantity. So you probably want to get them from us or somewhere else where you'll get a small container instead of 200 at size three. Or something like that. Unless you want to open a pill swallowing clinic in your area. So these are, this is kind of just to give you some of the pictures. And you can, as I said, use your own containers if you want. But this is what we do. Now, so the, in the beginning, you're setting up the room. It's comfortable. You're giving really clear instructions. And you're starting out with these tiny gradients of morsels of food. And you're increasing the size. On the back end, once the child is successful, and keep in mind now you're going at it, you have to figure out a pace where your child's successful, but moving forward. Okay, so not always staying. Three times is the minimum you want the child to be successful at any given size. But if you feel like 
okay, I went to the next size, and he, it was really hard for him, and he freaked out. Um, go back to the previous size and stay there a little bit longer, and then you can still keep moving forward again. The whole thing with this is just fear. Um, kids can swallow these pills, no problem, but putting something in their mouth, they get afraid of it. So as long as you can keep them calm about it, and I'll tell you two tricks that'll help too, but as long as you stay calm about it and, and make sure it's all fun, the kids usually do really well. So reinforcement, you need to beef up the reinforcers on these days. So you need to make sure that you have stuff that your child's motivated to work for. Um, and th you will allow, another way to go about it is to allow your child to avoid certain things on those days. So if it's a difficult session where you're at the maximum size and your child's having a hard time or keeps spitting it out or something, maybe you want to make sure that day is pleasant in other ways so that your child is getting some reinforcers. It's always really easy, you know, is it okay to give more reinforcers on days that you're teaching pill swallowing? If you do it three days a week or something, make sure those are fun days. Um, what you are basically doing is you're replacing some behaviors. So you don't want to wait until your child is crying and screaming. What you want to do is, most of the time what we do is we react to our kids as soon as they've, be, they've freaked out. And so you don't want to get to that point. That's why I'm saying take it slow. Go with the most successful thing. Make it positive because you're also building self-confidence whenever the child is successful. And I'm telling you, within a week you will easily get this done, but make sure that the child is not getting um, you to back off just because it was you jumped a step too fast. Um, require the behaviors that you know he can do, one tiny pill inst instead of a large capsule to begin with, as an example. Sometimes you're going to have kids who are just have a strong gag reflex and they don't want to deal with this at all, so they're going to try to get out. That's tough. If you're in a session and it's only three trials, it's three attempts each time you sit down, just don't let him out. Try it. You can always drop down to a smaller size. That is not a problem. Drop down to where he was successful or drop down to something that's positive. Reinforce it for swallowing something. Reinforce the behavior of swallowing and then let your child go. And then the next time, start with that same size, the smaller size where he was successful. So this is just trying again to say, don't let him avoid it. If, you, if you're able to get the child swallowing at whatever size he's capable of, that's good. When he spits out, you're gonna have to start again, essentially. Stay there until your session's done. Make it fair, and essentially what you're doing is very small expectations, high rewards, and then as soon as they're done, getting better, you reduce the rewards. That's another important thing is at the end of this session, you need to get your reward system back to normal because you can't throw a party every single time he takes a pill in the future. So you need to gradually, you're fading both sides. You're increasing the demand and you're decreasing the reinforcer so that it becomes normal after a while. And these are the two hints that will help you. With tablets, tablets are heavier than water. And when, what you do is they don't float in your mouth. So you basically place it in the middle of the tongue, slightly towards the back, and you will fill the mouth with a small amount of water, small, not large, because if you have too much water, it's gonna go in your cheek. So a small amount of water, and you tilt your head back with a tablet, and, that, and then swallow, okay? Um, and it will work. With, however, with capsules, capsules are lighter than water and they will, not, they will float because there's air inside them. So when you put a capsule in the mouth and you take a little bit of water, you actually have to tilt your head forward. Okay, and that is kind of counterintuitive to people, but with capsules, you should tilt your head forward when you're swallowing for the child because it'll go straight up into your throat. Okay? And those two tricks will really get you to get, become very successful with this. Um, I think the only other thing I want to tell you, and then I, I'll help answer any detailed questions, is really to, um, you know, there's the possibility that your child might inhale the object they're trying to swallow. So hopefully you have CPR training, or if you don't get it, 
and um, just be, this is like anything else that if your child is putting in their mouth, you have to be cautious about that. Our staff are all trained for this and we never will do this with, with, a, with a staff who doesn't have their CPR. So this is really important because it, it hasn't happened to us, it has never happened, but um, you really need to, ju I just wanna make sure that you're cautious about that and you don't go too fast, okay? So just to sum it up, you're making it a positive situation environment. You're gonna come up here maybe and look at these things whenever you like, or I'll take them to the demo room if you don't have questions now. And then you're gonna start with a tiny, tiny spec. You're making a very clear instruction, swallow your pill. You're giving the spec three times. You're rewarding that a lot. The next day, you'll move up to the next size after three times of success. Next size, next size, until you get to the point. And now remember, if you have literally 20 supplements, during that time, you're still giving your supplements however you used to. And once your child has mastered, let's say, one capsule, that doesn't mean that they can take 20. They can take one, that's their baseline. That's where they're at. So the next day, you'll maybe do two and three days later you'll go to three. So it'll take you a while to build up. Don't ever give your child a handful because you know they will actually try to swallow it all together and kids can't do that. So, or some kids can, but generally most kids can't. And um, so you're gradually shaping up from a very, very sm small morsel and trying as much as you can to prevent failure or prevent your child from getting upset.